My name is Keith Ratner. I'm the chairman of the geography department at Salem State University. Salem State's a medium-sized public university about 25 miles north of, De of Boston here. Today I'm going to talk about, well, sort of what is geography? Where is geography kind of in education today? And why do we not see a lot of it in the United States? And kind of go on from there as to why should geography be more in education in the United States? And I guess I'm going to really begin by talking about what is geography here? And there are many different definitions of geography. Um, but all of them sort of have some sort of key issues. One of them um, is sort of geography is sort of the study of places and the human and environment interaction within those places. There's, there's two kind of key elements to um, that definition. The first is that geography study places. There are five themes of geography of which place is one of those themes. Place is what's in an area. What are the unique characteristics of that place? Going there and understanding that place. Geographers, that's what we do. Place is very different than location, which is another one of the five themes of geography. Location is kind of where something is. Place is really what's there, whether it's those physical characteristics, or whether it's those human characteristics. It's really understanding everything about that place. So geography is sort of this holistic discipline that tends to look at the big picture here. I think my favorite probably definition of geography was one of my professors in my PhD program that called geography the why of where. And we think we, in the United States, we certainly spend lots of time talking about the where, and we often lose the why side of it. And the why side of geography is what really makes geography interesting. If I tell you that the capital of Vermont is Mount Pelier, you might remember that. If I tell you that the capital of Vermont is Mount Pelier because there were five different cities that were all kind of trying to determine who, which would be the capital, and Mount Pelier came up with $15,000 and said, you can put this and we'll start building the capital right now, we may remember that much better and now understand why Montpelier is the capital. So it's the why of where that's much more interesting than actually the where. Historically, geography has been a means of sort of exploring and interpreting the world and taking those explorations and that information that we learn and then kind of bringing it back for some sort of a benefit. Today, I don't think geography's changed a whole lot. Geographers still go out and explore the world interpret what they find and bring it back and try and find better solutions and maybe make better decisions. One of the things we always emphasize in geography is that geography is a decision-making discipline. It's a dis discipline that helps try and make things better and figure out how to do things in the future here. To give a couple of examples of sort of what geography really is and how it ties in, I sort of tie in with the theme of the conference. One of the themes of the conference was to make a difference in your community. I spent six years as a city planner in Danvers, Massachusetts. As a city planner, I had to understand the people. I had to understand the environment, and I had to understand how they interacted together. So I was doing geography, and I was helping the community of Danvers hopefully improve at that point in time. A second theme is to make a difference in the, globe, in the global world here. Well, geopolitics is such a big issue. If we don't understand the sort of politics and the geography behind the politics, again, if we don't understand the people, if we don't understand the environment and how they interact together, how are we ever going to understand the political situations around the world? And the last sort of theme here is creating better ideas for the future. And certainly if we understand the whole picture and we understand the world, we should be able to have a much better sense, chance to sort of fix things around us. And another thing that's really happened in geography in the last 25 or 30 years that ties into probably helping us make better decisions in the future is GIS, or Geographic Information Systems, or sort of computerized geography at this point in time. We can now take spatial information and non-spatial information and put it together and let the computer do spatial analysis. The GPS in your car that tells you how to get from where you are to get to where you're going is a GIS analysis. 
hopefully helps you make better decisions, although I'm not sure GPS always does that, but generally, hopefully, it helps you make better decisions here. So we moved to geographic education in the United States here, and in my sort of looking at this subject, I saw, geez, geographic education in the United States is very different than in much of the rest of the world here. When I talk to people, I have students from around the world, and say, where did you do geography? They pretty much say from kindergarten to 12th grade, geography is a class almost every year in school. We don't see that here in the United States. When you look at most universities around the world, or at least more of them, many of them have geography departments. I did a sort of quick search online, and I found out of 2,618 universities in the United States and Canada, only 580 had geography programs, or a little over 20% there. So we really see that it's very different. If you look at famous geographers from around the world, Mother Teresa was a geographer. Prince William, I'm not sure how famous he is, but he just got his master's degree in geography, and it was heralded all over the press that he had gotten a master's degree in geography. Um, Augusto Pinochet was also a geographer. Not sure he should be always heralded, but he was also a geographer. Interestingly enough, if you go on to Google and you say famous geographers in the United States, who shows up? Michael Jordan. Really kind of different person than these other sort of really famous people um, here. Looked at some sort of statistics about geography. And there were studies done in 1994, 2010, 2014 on the sort of um, proficiency of fourth graders, eighth graders, and twelfth graders in geography. Unanimously across the board, 75 to 80 percent of them were found to be not proficient in the United States in geography. According to a 2015 GAO report, only 17 states in the United States require a geography course. Or, uh, 17 middle schools, excuse me require a geography course. And only 10 high schools require a geography course. And in that same study, when they talked to teachers and they said, you know, more social science teachers, and said, how much geography do you incorporate in your class? Unanimously, said, they said, probably less than 10%. So we really see that we don't teach a lot of geography in the United States. So I guess then my question became, so why is the United States different? than a lot of the rest of the world. So I went and talked to one of my recently retired and esteemed colleagues who's sort of a philosopher and a very sort of um, deep thinking kind of person and also a folklorist, and I said, Steve, so why do you think there's no geography in the United States? And he had this kind of interesting answer saying, it really started with the development of the country. For centuries before that, in certainly Europe and a lot of the rest of the world, these global empires were being established. And as these countries were establishing these global empires, they sent people out to other parts of the world where they were trying to sort of establish their empire. And they went and learned about those places and understood those places and created connections between those places. In other words, they learned about the geography in a lot of those places, and that kind of thing. In the United States, when we became a country, it was Thomas Jefferson's manifest destiny. We weren't out there to kind of learn about, the, uh, learn about places and understand them. We were out there to conquer these places. We were out there to sort of shorten the distance between these kinds of places. Um, between these kind of places. We were, just had a whole different sense about the landscape. It was not something we wanted to learn about. It was something we wanted to overwhelm. The whole country was supposed to have our own national identity here and not be sort of this learning about things out there. If we look at geographic education sort of more recently and sort of a little bit more from this not historical perspective, we see that education in the United States at both the state and the national level kind of really moved towards English math, and science. Geography, history, economics, civics, all got lumped into this thing called social science there. And even when we look at the kind of standardized testing that goes on, English, science, 
math, not social science there. And even today, so this has probably been going on for 40 or 50 years there, so even today, if we look at elementary and middle schools, they're still teaching social science. None of these other fields seem to show up. When we get to high school, we certainly do see history has returned to high school, but very rarely do we see geography or a lot of those other subjects coming into high school. So, and even when geography is taught around here, in that GAO study, it was found that most of the teachers who are teaching it don't have a lot of background in geography because there's not a lot of geography sort of in the schools that they came from. And even if they do have the background, often the resources that they need to teach geography really are not available very often. I guess I was looking at myself and thinking, so what's my geographic background? And I think if I'm a typical American who grew up in the 1960s and 1970s, in my kindergarten through 12th grade, my bachelor's degree and my master's degree, I had one geography class. And that was in my master's degree in planning at Penn State. Penn State has a super geography program, and again, it just wasn't integrated. Michigan State, where I got my bachelor's degree, has a really big geography program. Again, I never took a class there. And then I grew up in that same town, and geography was not a part of what I did. When I started to get my PhD in 1994, in geography, I probably had no knowledge of what geography was. I was a planner and had never really even thought of what I was doing as a planner, really tied into geography. It's amazing because sort of what I've always done in my life is so geographically oriented, but I was just never introduced to the subject until I really decided to go get a PhD in the subject. So why is geographic education today important? Well, hopefully I've given you a few reasons to see, and I think the introduction here also talked about some of the importance of geography and why it's such a sort of interesting and wonderful way to look at the world. But I have a few more practical kinds of things that have come out there too. According to the Department of Labor, in 2012, employment of specialists in geography, or in other words, geographers, was projected to grow 29% between 2012 and 2022, much faster than the average percentage growth for almost all other occupations, which was at about 11%. When you go to GIS, this computer geography, you see things even, even greater and even more optimistic. And again, you see different sort of answers depending on where you go. I saw one study from the US Department of Labor that claimed the growth, the annual, so every year growth rate, of the geospatial technology industry in the United States was going to be 35%, with a third of that being in local governments there. And maybe not quite so optimistic of a sense, but a similar kind of thing, there was a PNS market research study that they said they projected an 11% growth rate. But regardless, it's a field that's growing immensely, something we need to be training people to do if it's a place where jobs are going to show up. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, cartography and photogrammetry are going to be one of the 20 fastest growing occupations between 2014 and 2024. And I certainly saw there was a big effort in 1994, or at least started in 1994, between the Association of American Geographers and the National Council of Geographic Education and the American Geographical Society and National Geographic to kind of look at some of these issues to see what would be the goals for teaching geography and what might be some of the problems from this. So these kind of studies have gone on. That study was sort of revised again, probably 10 years later. I've seen a couple of other state studies. I've seen a couple of other local studies and that sort of thing. But I'm not sure how much has changed. One of the things that us geographers are really hoping on is geography has recently become a STEM subject. And we're really kind of hoping as becoming a STEM subject that that's going to bring more attention to geography out there. But as I said, overall, I haven't seen a big change in geographic education. Certainly in New England, in my geography department at Salem State University, we usually have about 80 full-time undergraduate students. In a good year, maybe four freshmen come. Other years, we may get two new freshmen coming, and they either trip over us and find out about us, or more likely, we go out and recruit them. It's just not something 
that people know very much. We're actually trying to change the name of our department, because that's what most of the departments in the United States are doing, or add on to the name and be the Department of Geography and Environmental Sustainability, because that's what a lot of our work is in, and we're hoping that that will be more attractive, because nobody seems to understand what geography is. Okay, concluding statement, final statement here. So we see that long ago, America sort of decided to conquer its country and forget about the geography. It just didn't really matter. And it seems that that has really led us to a lack of sort of geographic understanding of people, and has also kind of led us to a lack of geographic education. Whereas in the rest of the world, we see that geography has kind of remained important. People want to understand the world around them. Can you imagine that, understanding the world around you there? And it just seems that it's time for everybody to start sort of going on and looking at making geography important. If we think about, again, returning to the themes of the conference, making a difference in your community, how can you make a difference in your community if you don't understand what's there? If you don't understand the people and the environment and how they interact together? Again, when we think about sort of making a difference in the world, how can we do that without understanding the people and the environment, and how they interact together. And as I said, the last thing, if we're trying to make better ideas and create better things, understanding the geography, maybe using GIS and computers, what better way is there to make sure we have all the information we really need to, to make much better ideas? So I encourage everybody to learn their geography, make sure other folks learn their geography, and let's push this and see if the United States can kind of join the rest of the world. Thank you very much for your time.